and welcome. So I'm Anna and you're looking at me a little bit differently than when I normally start my videos. I'm going to do something a little bit different today. There has been a lot of craziness going on around here and my craft table shows that you can see part of the wreckage here, but I need to clean up. I need to make some videos so that I can share more fun things with all of you, but I can't make videos until I clean up this mess. So I thought that if I showed you as I'm cleaning where I put things, where I organize things, how I clean up, how, how I do different things, I thought it might help you. I know many of you just absolutely love organization tips and cleaning up is absolutely part of that, right? Because we all, I think, if you actually craft, you end up looking like this too. So I'm going to get started. We're just going to talk and chat and, you know, you know, we're going to hang out in our craft rooms. So I mentioned that there has been a lot of craziness going on. So what is some of that craziness? Well, uh, I'm going to say one of the biggest things is we are in the process of finishing our basement so that I have a place to craft. Okay. So right now I am in the back of my living room since I moved to Northern Indiana about three years ago, since I married Farmer Matt, I have been crafting from the back of our living room. So I'm thankful for this place that I have. However, it's, it's difficult because it's basically in the middle of our living space and it's oftentimes a wreck like this or worse. You can't see part of it. And I've already cleaned up a lot of it too. Uh, but it's been difficult. So we are finishing our basement and I am going to have an office and a craft space and space for tables for my in-person classes that I offer. So that has been going on for about two and a half months and we are almost done. We are so close and yes, uh, I have been spinning almost all of my time painting and staining and cutting and planning and running to the store and all of those things that if any of you have done uh, either built a house or done some kind of remodeling project, uh, all the things that come along with that. So that's been going on. I sent out 200 Christmas cards a couple of days ago. Christmas is coming, so I'm trying to get ready for Christmas. And, oh, I did a really big craft show a couple of weeks ago, and a lot of this mess is left from that because I haven't cleaned up from that yet. So that's what's been going on. That's why I have a big mess right here. So we're going to clean up, and I will share with you some of where I'm putting things. Now, I have an orange in a small bowl on my table. The, I'm going to blame this on my amazing little helper that sometimes makes appearances in my video. I'm going to put that over there so that I can take it to the kitchen here in a little bit. So let me explain some of what I am doing here. I'm trying to make sure you can see. So one of the things that is also going on, on my craft table is I have been sorting. Now, for those of you who are new to my channel, I am a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. Uh, if you're new here, I'd love for you to subscribe. I share all kinds of fun things besides, besides organization. Uh, but I'm going to be sharing lots and lots of organization soon uh, once I get my new room. So you're definitely going to want to see that. So you can click below to subscribe and also hit that little bell. If you hit the little bell, you'll get a notification each time I share a new video. So where was I? I have a hard time talking and working at the same time. So, oh, so one of the things that's going on is when I get new products for new catalogs, then I do some reorganization. I, when products retire, because this is what I do for business, not just because I do it just for hobby, I clear out a lot of those retired products and then I put them in a separate place. I get rid of a few that I may not really want to hold on to in my collection. But this is something I really encourage you to do is maybe when the seasons change or if you follow Stampin' Up, maybe when we get our new catalogs, use that as a chance for you to go through your products as well. So I last night I cleared out my retired products. 
Uh, these are the ones that are sticking around. They're being carried over and I need to merge them into my regular collection. So I am going to grab the stamps and I do have another video from a while back where I gave a little tour of my craft area here. I also have some photos, but I keep my stamps over here in this cabinet that is really amazing. You can pick up one of these cabinets. Sometimes you can find these used that somebody is no longer using. Um, you can fit a lot of supplies in one of these cabinets. So I know you're not going to be able to see everything, but hopefully you can get the idea. I have one narrow shelf in there that I put all of my stamps on. Now I pulled this over here so that you could see it. This is my scraps bin and I'm stepping on a sponge dauber. So I'll pick that up. My scraps bin, it has, it's a photo storage organizer that has individual pockets you can pull out. I have all of my scraps organized by color, and I do also put my embossing folders in here. I have card front pieces pre-cut that say in that as well. Here are some die sets. I have started organizing my die sets on magnet cards when I have time, when I'm organized. Uh, but I have, under my work table right here, I have bins. Uh, this is my bin that holds my dies and my Stamparatus, Stamparatuses, Stamparati. I have a couple of them because I love them. Over here I have, this is a little box I made a few years ago. I shared the tutorial for it. This one isn't decorated and cute like the one I shared a tutorial for, but I put my adhesives in there. So I just toss, I see dimensionals, I see dimensionals, I see... A tape roller that is, I think, used up. We're going to throw that away. I see glue dots. Fun fact, my daughter robbed the cardboard roll inside of my glue dots because she sees potential in everything. Do you hear that, crafters? My daughter, she's seven. She sees potential in how to use everything. I have some foam that came, some packing material that came in my last step, Stampin' Up! order for some of my, I got some more organizers for my new Stampin' Blends markers. She opens the box. <gasps> Can I have this? <clears throat> she sees potential in everything. I'm like, oh, child, you got the disease like I did. Pens. So I'll show you this real quick. This is kind of my catch-all organizer that sits right here. Has a pocket on the end where I keep my stamp and pierce mats and my silicone craft sheets. I have the Stamparatus grid paper, uh, stamp cleaner here, and some upright organizers like this that I put my scissors, my pens and pencils, uh, blending pens, water painters, take your pick tool, all that kind of stuff goes right there. And there's a little drawer in the bottom where I can put some other things. So glue, bone folder, all of these things go right there. I do have another tote under my table for embellishments. Pull this one out. I found these organizers a few years ago. Uh, I see them all over the place, so you can probably find them. They came in a big case, but these are individuals. And I organize my embellishments in them. Now here's what I do. They sit up like this in this tote. I like them in this tote instead of the one that came in because this tote is open on top. I don't have to take the time to open it. But I, the embellishments that I put inside, I stick one of each on the outside and this is face up. So when I look at my embellishments, I can see what I have and what is in each little bin, each little container. So I'm not going to take the time right now to organize all of these. Sometimes with organizing, you have to do it in steps. And step one is going to be, I'm going to toss all my embellishments on top of there. And then I'll go back sometime, probably not during this video. Uh, after I'm done, I will go back and I will organize those into each little container. Envelopes. I have envelopes here. 
for my Christmas cards, I had ordered photos. Since I send handmade cards, I don't order like photo cards, but I like to send a family picture with them. So this is interesting because when you're cleaning, you always find things that you're like, oh yeah, I needed that. Or I wondered where that was. I thought I was out of photos for my cards. I just found a big stack. Now I know. Now I know. I was going to have to give a few people cards without photos on them. Now I don't have to do that. Ribbon. I have my third tote down here has ribbons. And I try to organize them like this, sitting side by side so I can see all the colors. Then I have this little container on top that I put random pieces in. And because they needed a home, I have baby wipes in there too. So while I'm cleaning, if I find more ribbons, I am going to toss them on top of that tote. And see, as, as you're probably going to start noticing, when I'm working, I have this set up so that I can grab what I want, toss it back, and it's like all right here. Now a minute ago, I had put a punch down in one of my drawers. I have three drawers down here at the bottom. I also have a little door that I can open that has some organization in that. But my punches go in a couple of these drawers, which I absolutely love. They are right here in handy. Now up at the front of my table, there is a little, uh, kind of a little groove where I can store some things in. I keep an assortment of my stamping blocks right there in that groove so that they are right there and close to grab. Clear sleeves. These had some of my Christmas cards in them, the pieces and parts before I got them all done. I reuse these. I store them in one of the little drawers down here under my table. So I will stack them up. And once I think I have all of them, I will put them down in that drawer. They have some pieces and parts in them. Here are a few little pieces that say Merry Christmas. I'm going to pull those out because they don't need to be stored. But I'll tell you here in a little bit, I'm going to end up with probably lots of pieces and parts that were cut for cards. Here are some of those beautiful angels, the Angels of Peace stamp set. Getting ready to retire here at the end of December. Here I have some card kits I need to put together sometime. Now, I hear from some of you that unfinished projects are a challenge. Okay, I'm gonna show you this right now. Uh, love this inside of my cabinet. I put out these magnetic sheets and I can store my dies. I store my most used dies here. Love that. So, unfinished projects. What I do, I have several baskets, little plastic tubs or totes, uh, little containers that I keep those things in. And occasionally I get those out and I work on them. So keep them, find a place, find a drawer, find a shelf. Uh, but if you can find a certain spot to put those things, it's really going to help you stay organized. Because you don't want unfinished business clogging up your table and keeping you from doing new things uh, unless you really need to finish that unfinished project before you move on to anything else. But if you're anything like me, sometimes I just lose inspiration on certain projects and it's like I can't go any farther. So I need to need to do something else and get, get some fresh ideas, some fresh projects. Card bases. So these are a couple of card bases that had been in for my Christmas cards, these did not get used. I must have run out of the pieces that were going to go on the front of them. And I'm going to grab this down here real quick. I keep my pre-cut card bases in this little basket in all of the colors. I love this. And it makes it so easy when I go to make a project. This sits right beside my table. I can grab the one or the ones that I want. I can pull them out when I get down to one or a couple of of that color that I'm grabbing. What I do is I grab my big cardstock 
it sits right down here under my table in a tote. They sit standing up like this so I can grab the color I need. I label each color and I'm going to show you how I do that. So they're sitting straight up and I have a little, um, you can get these at the office supply store and probably Walmart or the dollar store. But the little flexible tabs that you can write on, I label my colors and they all sit in that tote right there. So I have a feeling I probably have more card bases here. I, yes, here are a whole bunch right here. So I'm gonna work on them. So in my new craft space, I have been dreaming about this for probably a year or a little more, trying to come up with how I want to organize everything. So I have the big parts figured out. Uh, my main craft space is going to be an island. I don't like to face a wall when I'm working. I like to be facing here. I'm facing a window, which is nice, but my uh, if I can't face a window, my preference is that I can at least be facing the center of a room and not a wall. So my island, I spent quite a bit of time designing my island as far as the drawers that are going in it. Uh, my drawers are going to be certain heights so that here are my, here are my little ink pads that don't, I have a few that don't fit in these. So I store them in one of my open storage cubes, which is handy. So my drawers are certain sizes to fit all of my supplies. So most of my supplies are going to be to my left and to my right in drawers. I have one that is deep enough. I can store my most used paper. I have narrow ones that are going to be for punches. I can't wait. It's going to be fantastic to have everything right here that I can pull out and kind of just stay in my spot and have what I need right there. I have some finished cards. I'm going to stack those up. I have stacks right here of my photos that I need to do something with. Envelopes, finished cards. Here are some templates. I had done finished card. I had done some cute little things for the craft show and I made up templates to store in a file so that next year when I do a craft show and I'm trying to remember, well, hey, what do I want to make? What did I make last year? I have these little guys that I can stick in that file. I can fold this flat so it fits really nice. And instead of trying to dig around on my phone for pictures or remember what I made, I can just go straight to that file and pull out some of those ideas. Here we have envelopes. So the children were helping stuff cards because there was not a chance with everything else going on that I was going to have time to trying to make sure we're still recording. Okay. There was not a chance I was going to have time to do all of the cards myself, even though the cards were ready. We just needed to stuff them and sign them and send them, uh, but the kids were helping. So that's my stack of envelopes that got our return address stamped upside down or messed up on it. So put them with my envelopes. Usually I figure out a way to use them to cover it up or do something with those later on. So these are pre-cut card fronts. They measure four by five and a quarter. I keep a big stack of these in the front pocket of my scrap bin. Makes it so easy when I need one of those. One of those because I use them a lot and I always use them on the insides of my cards. So keep them pre-cut. It really helps. Now we have some pieces and parts. These were some things I had started to prepare for the craft show and they didn't get finished. So what I'm going to do with them is, and I have more of my clear sleeves, I am going to put these again, I can't talk and work at the same time. Sometimes I am going to put these in. I also have little tiny pieces everywhere and I'm trying not to dump them. I'm going to put these in my unfinished, 
projects section. And I can finish them for myself or I can wait and finish them next year for a craft fair. I these cute little snowman faces I stuck on the fronts of some peppermint patties and these were some of the little pieces left over. I didn't get them all done. So into the unfinished project section they go and actually here are some. I just saw one of these. Where is it? These are cute little uh, double pocket treat holders. You can put lots of things into these. You can put tea bags. G okay, so here's a debate I've been having. Is it Ghirardelli or is it Ghirardelli little chocolate candy squares? Is it Ghirardelli? Because if so, I've been pronouncing it wrong. In my videos, when I make little treat holders that you can store, uh, or little treat holders that you can use for them. So I think I've been wrong. Uh, but anyway, you can put those in there. You can put little post-it pads. But I had some extra pieces from these. I didn't get them put together. So I just put them down there. Now, if you haven't already noticed, uh, my ink storage is here. I love it because it keeps all my ink pads and my markers right here where they are really easy to access. So I know where my colors go, as long as I don't take like half of them out at the same time, I always know where my colors go back. Cute little drawing for my daughter. She's always making fun things. Water painter goes in this organizer with little upright containers right there that I can grab anytime. These, I have no idea what these are. Some designer paper that retired like eight years ago. It must have come. I've been organizing. I've been going through some old things that have been around. Uh, these were card inserts for, made special cards with a little insert for my customers. So I have a few inserts left over. I don't think I finished my last thought, but here was a cute little elf candy bar cover I made. Oh my gosh, those turned out so cute. So I am going to start making piles here. I have one of designer papers. Now, if the designer papers that I'm pulling out, if they went with papers that I still have in my collection, I would put them back. I keep them in sleeves in here, all of my designer papers. But so far, these are ones that have been around a while. They're not in my collection anymore. So I'm going to make a pile of those to put in my other paper stash that stays a little bit farther away from my table because I don't use it as often. I'm going to make, start making piles of cardstock that needs to go in my scrap bin over here. Strips. Strips of white paper. When I do my card front pieces, I end up with these little half inch strips. Now I have a big collection of them because I use them a lot, but I can only use so many. So one thing that this may, this may make some of you cringe out there. I don't know. Uh, but one thing I used to save everything. I used to save everything and where I have gotten over the years is that saving everything makes life worse. Saving everything makes life worse. Uh, so I do part ways with my small scraps. If I don't think I'm going to use it soon, I get rid of it. I do not need to keep too many things here that are clogging up my usable space for my crafts. I want to be able to enjoy this. If I end up with too many things, I can no longer enjoy it. So here is my buildup of trash from my paper cutter. I had to cut the ends off of my four by six pictures. I always do this uh, to put in our Christmas cards so that they fit into my five and a half inch long handmade card. So that's my 
collection of those. And here I'm going to start sorting out papers. Um, I'm curious, am I the only one that ends up with a giant stack of paper scraps where my, uh, where my paper cutter is, my trimmer? Please tell me no, please tell me I'm not alone. Little white pieces that are totally usable. Like I could stamp a greeting on this. I could stamp something that's small that I need to punch. I have a little collection of these up here in that little groove, uh, really handy. And maybe you could have like a little container, a little bowl or something that you keep handy. If you use a lot of white paper scraps like I do, uh, that is so helpful to have just those little white scraps right there that are close and easy to find. So I have a current, I just made a stack for my current designer papers. I have a stack for old designer papers that aren't here in my collection anymore. Now the way I organize my designer papers, I do keep, I mentioned this, but I do keep them organized by, by the pack that they came in. And I, when I'm organized, I, there are tabs on the tops of those paper packs. So it's easy for me to flip through my collection and find the ones, the one or the ones that I want. And I'm getting distracted, so if I'm not finishing any of my thoughts, just throw me a question or a comment down below. These were from a project I was gonna share in a video, and it hasn't happened yet, uh, with some of my ink refills, like a really fun technique. I may have to get those out and share them. Another ink pad hiding in my collection. This is a really fun new stamp set. Uh, I am getting ready to make, I'll probably make a video here in a little bit. With that, it's called Artfully Inked. It's in the new January through June mini catalog. Card base, here's some card fronts. Now here's a card that is partially done, not completely done. Anything that I have that is partially done. Uh, here I have a little flower punch. Here I have a frame piece. I cut this so I could use the inside, but the outside is very usable too. My angel that's already colored. I am putting those in a pile. They will go into my drawer of pieces and parts that are pretty much ready to use anytime I want to use them. So I haven't opened that drawer up for a while besides to add things to it, but I really want to sit down. I may do that for a video sometime, pull out all of these old pieces and parts of things that were left over and I didn't want to throw them out and just sit down and see what kind of projects I can make with them without making new things. Now, sometimes with my scraps, I have a decent scrap on the bottom, a not decent scrap on the top. So I cut or tear those off and keep the usable part. There's a cute little teddy bear I can use. Here are, those are taller than card bases. So I'm not gonna put them in my card base collection unless I trim them down. debating if this one fit. That one does. That one needs trim down. So I'm making a stack of my cardstock. Here's one of these white pieces that the bottom is all used up, but the top I can still use for some greetings or punch it, small things that I want to punch out or die cut. I find lots of these for my child's projects. So like reused printer paper. We, If we have copies or printer paper, anything like that, that we use one side of, but not the other, I keep those in a stack because a lot of times I can use that for scrap paper or, you know, different things for stamping without using up my good paper. So then she uses lots of them for her projects and I find pieces and parts everywhere. Take your pick tool. One of my favorite tools goes right there, nice and close. So 
some more markers need to go in. I just love, I think I already said this, I'm going to say it again. I just love my ink storage. And sometimes with these colors, I'm not sure which is which. That's pool party. We'll put it there. Back here, I have some sponge daubers and some reinkers that were from a project. Now I need to get my sponge daubers organized by color. I have not done that for a while. Here I have two open packs of daubers. I'll put those into one. And I do keep my sponges and my daubers down here under my table. So I may put them back here in a little bit. There's another one of car those cards I need to use in my video for that brand new stamp set. Here are some little circle tags for some of my Christmas cards that didn't get used. I'll put them there. Here are some card bases that never got greetings, never got finished. Here are some brand new and organizing my brand new products so I can start sharing a lot of them with you. So I'm curious, you'll, you'll have to give me some comments down below and let me know. Oh, I just can't throw these out now. I told you I throw, I don't keep everything, but I also don't throw everything away. These are cute little holly leaves punched out of gold foil paper. And I was going to throw them away. And then I was like, you know what? Those are too cute to throw away. We are keeping those because I can embellish a Christmas card with those. Does this ever happen to you? This piece of paper must have had adhesive on it. And then it got stuck to this card base right here. So I'm going to get rid of that piece. This card base right here is still usable. I can cover that up and no one will know if I get that adhesive off of there. So do you ever reuse pieces of paper if you like mess up the backside? Do you ever flip it over and make something new with it? I know I do. I do not like to waste paper. I do not like to waste supplies. So even though this got a little messy here, we'll save it and I'll put it back in my collection and that will be a totally usable card base for me. So I'm basically down to organizing paper scraps here. So I am going to do We'll do a little bit of it right here and I'll explain and put it back over here in my scrap collection. And then I think we may wrap this up. So uh, let me know what you want to see, what you want to know about my new craft room in the basement. It's going to take me some time to get organized, to get situated. But once I really feel organized and situated, I plan to do a room tour video to show you how I have everything set up and organized. But yeah, let me know what you want to see. Let me know if you have questions about my current craft area. I think I wanted, and I may do one more video from this area, uh, showing you how I have, have everything set up before I move to my new area. I haven't decided. Uh, but I wanted to show this area because when I get into my new area, it may be very possible for someone with not a lot of space to think, well, sure, you can be organized and have spaces for everything when you have a lot of space. But what do you do when you don't have a lot of space? Um, I have been working pretty much with this cabinet and the organization in this table. Uh, I do have a couple of things spread out a little farther. My office is here too, so I have computers and a few drawers that I've expanded to right here. Um, but you know, this is what I do for a living basically. So for me to be able to do all of this right here along the back wall of my living room, uh, is, is pretty good. I think so you don't have to have a lot of space if you stay organized and if you really manage your supplies, I, I mentioned earlier, encouraging you to use maybe the changing seasons, or maybe you do it once a year. Maybe you do it like I do when new Stampin' Up! catalogs come out. Whatever it is, make yourself some kind of regular uh, schedule that you're going to go through your craft supplies 
and organize and sort those out and get rid of the ones that you're not using. Now, some of you, when I mention that, that pains your heart and you're like, I can't part with this stuff. I love it. And I totally understand. And what I think, keep in mind that when you have too much, it's really holding you back. It's holding you back from having space and being able to be organized and do what you love and make these things that you can share with other people and let them know that you love them. So how can you try to deal with the thought of parting ways with things? And I think one of the most, I think one of the best ways to uh, deal with that struggle is find a place, find a worthy cause where you can pass on those supplies that will make you feel good about yourself and the fact that someone else can be using the things that you're not using. So what are some of those places? Uh, schools, preschools, retirement homes, or um, I'm not sure, nursing homes. Um, those are good places. You can donate them to Goodwill. You will make somebody's day so amazing when they find that craft stash at Goodwill and you know they're gonna go home and tell all their friends look what I found at the thrift store today so you can donate things there uh, you can sell there are a lot of Facebook groups there are a lot of groups online where you can sell your old supplies and lots of people want them now what one thing I know a lot of times I see people wanting to get rid of stamps that have the wood blocks on them and I don't see a lot of people showing interest in purchasing those at this point uh, so those might be really good candidates for for having a hard time talking and thinking again those would be good candidates for um, donating places so think about that is de-stashing your craft room something that would benefit you? Now, last year in my Facebook group, I had done a challenge for de-stashing and organizing your craft room. If you would like to see those posts, you can request to join that group. Uh, they're really easy to go back and find by searching. You can use the little magnifying glass up at the top to search my group and I had them all numbered. I think they were titled craft room clean out challenge number. And then they were like one through 16 or something like that. Uh, so those would be easy to go back and search if you want to see those. I am doing pretty well going through my paper stack. Now I'll show you what I'm doing because I'm not sure you may be able to see a little bit of this. So what I do, these need to be on my designer paper pack, paper stack. So I sort these into color combinations. When I get down to just my paper scraps, I sort them into color combinations. So I'll have like greens, I'll have reds, I'll have blues, browns, and then I take them over here to my scrap collection. And these are organized color by color. One of my absolute favorite things about Stampin' Up! products is our color collection. So we have our, is it 50? 50 standard colors, I think plus white and black. Um, but I don't ever have to worry about finding things that coordinate and finding designer paper that matches my cardstock and some ribbon that looks good with it because it all matches. All of our colors coordinate. So. I have them organized color by color. So that was my Poppy Parade scrap. I put with my Poppy Parade scraps that are in here. I put my real red scrap. I have them all in order by the rainbow. So I'm gonna finish up just with my paper scraps right here. I have a few things. I need to stick my envelopes over here where they go in my desk. I have a few Christmas cards to send out. I can put my photos there and send them out. I do have that drawer of um, unused 
pieces and parts that are ready to use. Uh, I'll put these there and my table is going to be cleaned up and ready for me to make some videos so that I can share some other fun things with you. So thanks so much for watching along. I hope you enjoyed this. Like I said, let, let me know what you think. Ask if you have questions. Give me some thoughts on the new craft area. I can't wait to get down there and share it with you. But I appreciate you spending your time with me. I love doing what I do. And I love that many of you like to watch along and see the projects that I share. So have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful week. Get that craft area organized and I will see you again soon.